going on guys? GeoSnow right here, so in today's video we're going to discuss about the iOS 10.3.3 because Apple has finally seeded the public release of it a couple hours ago and they released the iOS 10.3.3 just a couple hours after I made the yesterday video in which I said it's probably going to be released soon and in which I told you to save the blobs, so a better timing couldn't have been humanly possible. Anyways, let's go into the news. So if you did not see the video that I made yesterday, it's available in here. And in this video, I told you what you should do. You should not update. Uh, I told you about the Adam Donenfield's exploit that is going to be released next month. So it's important to see it. It's still relevant to this point, but now more than ever, it's important not to update and to stay on uh, 10.3.2 or lower and I'm going to show you why. We have the security researcher in here from Google Project Zero called Ben Hawks and uh, he has posted a couple uh, hours ago even though it says now this thing in here, quote, iOS 10.3.3 fixes the uh, CVE, which is a vulnerability we're going to discuss about. Uh, if you're interested in user space research on iOS, keep a device on 10.3.2 or below. Tool release next week, end quote. And no, this is not going to be a jailbreak, so the tool is not going to jailbreak your phone. Keep that in mind. I can't stress this enough because I got questions already whether this is a jailbreak release or not from people. No, it's not a jailbreak release. The guy in here, uh, or probably the team, is going to release a uh, tool that would probably work for um, user space research using this vulnerability listed in here, CVE 2017. Uh, 7047. We're going to see what this vulnerability is actually. You can see, sure enough, they did release it uh, today, iOS 10.3.3 with build number 14G60. And uh, iOS 10.3.2 is still available for the moment. It's still signed. It's probably not going to stay signed for a very, very long time, especially if Ben Hoax is going to release that tool for poking with iOS uh, on uh, user space research. So definitely go ahead, save your blobs. If you're on 10.3.3 beta or iOS 11 for any reason, go ahead to 10.3.2 and stay there if you have any concerns to the jailbreaking. And uh, as you can see, this uh, these two IPSWs in here are completely uh, identical when, of course, rounded in, um, in the size. So 2.42, 2.42, like in here and in here. You can see they're paired somehow. Of course, if you take a look at the whole number, it's probably going to have some minor differences. But um, yeah, iOS doesn't really get many features by now. Uh, in fact, Apple didn't actually insert any new features in 10.3.3, it's just bug fixes and boy did they patch a lot of bugs. So let's take a look in here, it says about the security content of the iOS 10.3.3 and uh, this document is going to be available in the description. You should have probably uh, seen it already if you, if you had the update on your uh, device. We're going to talk about it anyways. So uh, it says in here, released on um, 19th of July, 2017, iOS 10.3.3, .3, and you have bugs on contacts, core audio, event kit UI, IO USB family, kernel, fair enough, kernel again, fair enough, and then again kernel. So you can see a couple kernel exploits in here. Impact, an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Definitely something that can be used in a jailbreak as far as I know. And let's go ahead and here, lib archive, which uh, impact unpacking a maliciously crafted archive may lead to arbitrary code execution. Again, a pretty hefty one. Then you have Live XPC, and we're talking about this vulnerability in here with this code, CVE 2017-7047. Uh, you can see it in here as well. Uh, from Jan Beer of Google Project Zero, and it says impact. A, an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with system privileges. So definitely something powerful, and the description is a memory corruption issue was addressed with improved memory handling, which means this has been patched by now in iOS 10.3.3. Rats. Anyways, going ahead, we have messages and uh, impact a remote attacker may cause an unexpected application termination. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing with emojis when you send, or a character, a special character from Arabic languages, when you send one to somebody via messages and his phone definitely freezes or reboots and so on, or the application crashes, something to that extent. Notifications, a, uh, notifications may appear on the lock screen when disabled. 
Fair enough. Safari. Where there, there are a lot of, uh, you know, WebKit exploits patched both in iOS 10.3.2 and 10.3.3. So I have no idea why there are a lot of, uh, of them in the in this version's impact. Visiting a maliciously uh, crafted website may lead to address bar spoofing. Fair enough. Safari printing, telephony, WebKit. Now we have a couple WebKit in here. As I said, WebKit is basically on what Safari runs. And you can see there are a lot of them patched. For some reason, more than ever, there are a lot of WebKit exploits. And uh, yeah, anyways, we have Wi-Fi. And an attacker within the range may be able to execute arbitrary code on the Wi-Fi chip. So basically, if I'm close to you and I know how to exploit this thing, I can basically do shit on your Wi-Fi chip without you knowing. So yeah, I'm pretty glad this has been patched, but you should keep in mind that this hasn't been patched in iOS 10.3.2, 10.3.1, 10.3, and so on. So you are vulnerable if you're on a lower device. You should keep that in mind before connecting to sketchy VPNs or sketchy public networks from cafes and so on. You should keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you should go ahead and save your blobs and um, keep them somewhere safe. Watch this video in here that I presented yesterday in which I talked about the jailbreak more in a perspective of, you know, saving blobs and staying on a lower version and so on. And till the next time, do not forget, subscribe to stay updated and peace.